Hey guys, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. Uh, today, we're talking about how to set up your amplifier to use with effects. Now, the reason we're talking about this is because a lot of you guys have uh, posted in the comments section, which we really appreciate. It uh, helps us, you know, sort of work out what you guys are, you know, really keen to um, find out about. This has come up quite a few times, guys wondering how they're supposed to set up their amplifier to use with effects pedals. So what are the main questions there uh, in terms of, this isn't about effects placement, this is about gain structure in the amp? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, interesting. See, the question itself is a bit misleading. Um, there, I mean, there are uh, certain things that you can do with the amplifier, but it's more about which pedals work with which amplifier. Okay, so we've touched that makes on sense. we've touched on this before, where we've taken uh, any distortion box you could have mentioned, plugged it into two different amps, and it sounded completely different, right? Yes, yes. So I thought we'd we'll touch on that again. What we've got um, is two different amplifiers with two different gain structures. Um, yeah, the two amplifiers we've got. So the first amplifier we've got is this 18 watt Marshall, okay? And this is the guitar direct into the amplifier. <laughs> All right, just that fantastic grindy Marshall sound. It's compressing as soon as it hits the amplifier, so there's no headroom there. Okay, so, but that's that's that Marshall sound. That's Beautiful. A, it's great. That's a great sound. It's a fantastic sound. We, you know, it's the sound we love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we have the Fender Twin. It's so clean. Uh, so this is interesting. So the twin that we've got is actually one of the late 70s uh, silver face ones, which anyone who's had and owned twins will know that it, they were the more powerful ones. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not as well loved as the blackface 65 no. um, reissue style uh, or the original 65 blackface amps mid 60s yes. that they now reissue that's extremely popular yeah. the difference between the 65 blackface reissue twin that you might know and one of these is this is just loud 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 that's it when they started producing these amplifiers they thought you know what electronically we can make these circuits better we can open them up more we can make them more efficient you know let's do that um, they got them on the scope and they made sure all the signals were as big as they, they could and they said we've got these amazing new silver face amplifiers and they just weren't as loved as the predecessors because just because there is more doesn't mean it sounds any better. Yeah, and also you know? remember that back then the 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 task was volume, wasn't exactly. it? That's yeah, what yeah, people of wanted. Course. They wanted volume, volume, volume. Yeah. They hadn't they hadn't realised that tone existed at that point. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> it yeah. wasn't something they talked about, was it? No. And I mean, just to add insult to injury in this amp, it's also got the super high power um, EV type speakers as mm -hmm. well. Like we we carried it in here and. <laughs> I used yeah. to carry these around in my younger gigging days, in my late teens, I used to carry these around um, exactly the same thing, just because they were the loudest thing you could get. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd forgotten how back-breakingly <laughs> heavy yeah, they are. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. Um, they, and they can sound great. You know, yeah. even, even this particular model that we have here, it can be made to sound great. But the reason we're using these two just at the moment is the incredible, the complete opposite of the spectrum. Let's just hear are. that again, just back okay. to back. So, so back to back. So, Marshall by itself. <laughs> There's no pedals, that's nothing. That's guitar straight to the amplifier. Now, twin. I don't know if it will come through on the video, but those speakers are so, I mean, I can feel it in the backs of my legs there. Yep. They're yeah. so powerful. They're so powerful and There's quite efficient no as well. You know, the no, nothing. No, it's like a, like a glorified PA yeah. speaker. Yeah, you so if you, if you wanted to be chopping away, funky, super clear. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, that's the. Yeah, it's just, um, 
the clarity. Like, yeah, a lot of the funk players, you know, play these amplifiers. Just so clear and so loud to keep up with that horn section. Yeah. You know? But it's but equally it's fair to say while Fender does do some silver face reissues, it's the it's the black face stuff that people love, isn't oh, it? Oh of course. So yeah, anyway, yeah. we've talked enough about right. twin reverbs. So we're gonna look at now is a couple of pedals. Alright, just a couple of overdrive pedals. I've got the um now these are not these are cheap and not necessarily nasty, depending on what you plug them into. We're gonna see that in a second. But not expensive, we're not looking at the boutique things at the moment. It's just a really simple example of the pedals that, that you will know the sound of and how they sound to these two particular amplifiers, okay? So we'll start with the Big Muff, okay? Now, here's the Marshall by itself. Here is the Big Muff into the Marshall. Right? It's a sound. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. It's a sound. Now here is the big muff into the twin. <laughs> right, this is uh, the frequencies calling. <laughs> Where have you all gone? Ah, uh, so. Okay, well, it's quite a different thing. And now, I guess we need to be a bit careful here. We do, because, no, because it's a sound. It's still a sound, and yeah, people yeah, yeah. will use it. You know, I'm not saying it's a bad sound, <laughs> but I am saying it's a bad sound. Yeah, right? yeah. So, yeah, it's not a sound I particularly it, No, for, it, it, it's, yeah, it's an effect sound. You know what I mean? Sure. It's not a toneful thing. Yeah, yeah. We can hear the Big Muff interacting with the Marshall, and it's, you know, yeah. it sounds lovely. A, B them again. So, Just go, go. <laughs> Tell you what's interesting about that, right? So I spent, I spent from about, uh, I don't know, whenever I got my first Fender Twin, I'd have been about 15 or 16. Right. To about, well, a few good few years thinking that all fuzz pedals sounded awful. Exactly. And now I know why. You know why? Because those sharp edges of the fuzz pedal, that ha! square wave is hitting and the, and the detail of those edges is coming through so clearly yep. with the twin. But what's happening with the compression in the in the Marshall type amplifier, those square edges are getting rounded off. Yep. So you get this smooth type compression. As opposed to. I mean, that that is akin to plugging your fuzz pedal into the mixing desk. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's just yeah. it's wide open. Yeah, I mean I don't I don't hate it as much as you, but it's not that sound, is it? It's not. No, it's not. I don't hate it. All right. I don't. No, I don't hate it. It's because it's it's a sound, but it's it's so harsh. It's not that sound, is it? It's not that sound. Whereas that was that sound. Exactly. That's yeah, yeah. you know. You could, that's that's for days. Yeah. That sound. Um, however. Uh, if you look at, you know, that's the Super Overdrive pedal, okay, it has a very pronounced mid-range hump in it. So if we plug that into the twin, so we go the twin again by itself. Now we put the Super Overdrive into that. That's great. I can work with that. Just out of interest, does the Super Overdrive have a bit of the clean signal mixed in like a tube screen? Yeah, right? you can hear it, can't you? You can hear it. There's a, that directness in it. Yeah, so, yeah. So, I mean, it's very similar in circuit to, to a tube screamer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but now, if we listen to the Super Overdrive into the Marshall, now, that's not a bad sound, but it is so yeah. heavy on the mid-range yeah. that, um, as opposed to the big buff, imagine that coming out you all night. 
We know that'd be. Just do that again. Just uh, so what we're going to hear now is the Marshall. Yeah. First with the big muff, and then when the sound when the sound changes, that will be the super overdrive. Yeah. So Marshall first, the big muff. <laughs> Now, can you do the same thing with the twin? Yes. So we'll go twin, big muff, and then super overdrive. So twin. Uh, big muff. Interesting, huh? So, I think one of the models of this story is um, I really like the idea of asking better questions and not looking for ultimate answers. And what I mean by that is the, the question, as opposed to how do I make my effects work with my amplifier, really should be what effects are going to work better with my particular amplifier. Yeah. It's going to be all, you know, it's particular to you. And now, you, some guys, I guarantee you, there are going to be guys here who have heard the big muff into the twin have gone, that's it, that's what I'm looking for. And if yeah. that's what you're looking for, fantastic. Knock yourself out. And you'll knock out everyone else around you as well, <laughs> but hey, it's part of the process. Um, so, that is one part of the equation, all right? Yeah, and it can be, so, let's say you're looking for a new overdrive pedal, you hit a forum somewhere and you go, what is the blah, blah, blah overdrive pedal? Is uh, what, What's that like? And 50% of the people go, it's the best overdrive I've ever heard. And the other 50% of the people go, you know what, that sounds like balls. Yeah, exactly. And the it's reason is yeah. because they're always in different amps, exactly. right? Exactly. It's amazing. You know, the, the comments that come through are how particular and detailed these guys are about the way the pedal sounds. Mm. With no reference whatsoever to what they're using. I mean, let's let's do this. So let's do the same thing with the Strat. Okay. Now, the reason I want to do the Strat is because it's still single coil pickups. All right. There's still rosewood fingerboard. You know, there there are a lot of similarities physically between these two guitars. But have listened to the results. Wildly different. Yeah. Okay. So again, Marshall. <laughs> So immediately you hear that the output of that guitar is not as high as the output of this guitar. No way, not you know? even close, is it? Telecaster bridge pickup, mm. one of the greatest rock inventions right, in right. the history of I don't need to feel any worse about it. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but that's the, you, you, you understand, it's, it's even though, you know, if you look at the spec, you know, there are similarities that yeah, the so outcome could, is consistent. It couldn't be more different. Couldn't be more different. Okay, so that's, that's the Marshall. One more time. Okay, twin. Okay, uh, let's do the big muff into the Marshall. <laughs> that sounds mega. Right, now, big muff into the twin. Okay, super overdrive into the Marshall. Oh, sorry, super overdrive into the twin first. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah, because it puts all the mids back into the yeah. on the neck on the neck pickup probably. Perfect. That's that. That's the sound I used for years. So, and now super overdrive into the Marshall. And that's great, but it's not. It doesn't have the detail, the clarity. That just mid, 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 yeah, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Can you just um, flick through the? Uh, I'll just stay on the bridge pickup a sec. Mm -hmm. Let's hear the bridge pickup, Marshall and. Fender with the super overdrive. Bridge pickup with the Marshall and the super overdrive. Okay. Now the twin. 
Dufresne. Yeah, it just... It's great. Right. You would say they were different pedals, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what we've done up to this point, we've looked at two very opposite ends of the spectrum amplifiers. The absolute pristine clean of a Fender Twin versus the, you know, the sort of grindy compression of the Marshall. What we're going to do now, we're going to have a look at an amplifier that can, that covers the ground of both. Yeah, okay. so I haven't seen one of these before. What's this? Okay, this is a Hampstead amplifier, right? It's an English amplifier um, made by Peter Hampstead. Uh, it's a wonderful thing. Um, so Peter Hampstead, his background is in aeronautical space engineering. I mean, he's genius, yep. right? And this amplifier has a very different approach to things. But now, how I got, how I found this amplifier in the first place, when I was doing the work for the, um, the Ed O'Brien Pelleball build. Is that Ed O'Brien from Radiohead? That's Ed O'Brien from Radiohead. I don't feel I've mentioned him enough today. <laughs> um, my mate Ed. Uh, what a super guy. Just, yeah. Anyway, so when I was doing the work for Ed, um, one of the things that Ed, when he plugged into my AC30 and he loved it, my AC30 has this, uh, an EF86 channel, okay? And he said, you know, can you mod my, my amplifiers? I said, well, I'll get someone else to do it because I'm busy doing his, his rig. So, um, my mate Mike Hill, who's worked with Jim Marshall for years and years, yep. and uh, incredibly experienced, fantastic amp repair guy, does loads of stuff anyway. I was up at Mike's and we're getting the, the amp done, and I said to Mike, you know, what's, what's the best amplifier you've ever heard? And he said, oh, there's you know, so many great amps. Said, but I did have an amplifier in here a couple of weeks ago, the original Fox AC30, that sounded amazing, <laughs> right? Now, the original AC30 had a pair of cathode biased EL34s, not the four EL84s that we all know and love. Right. That's the Vox sound, but the very first ones ever had this pair of EL34s. And I thought, wow, that's really cool, you know. So I've, I've kept an ear out. And then I was talking to um, Rob Harris, um, who's a good mate, plays for Chimera Choir. Chimera yeah. So yeah, I've, I've been playing these, these new amplifiers, these Hampstead amplifiers, they're fantastic. I thought, oh, that's interesting, you know, because uh, there's, you know, I get told about new amplifiers all the time. Mm -hmm. But I looked up the spec, pair of cathode bias ER34s mm -hmm. in the back end. So it piqued my interest. Um, so I drove up there and had listened to it and uh, I was floored. I thought it was sounded absolutely fantastic. And one of the things about it is, yeah, it, it can cover a lot of ground. Um, so let's... I'll plug it in. Cool. Okay, so we've paused there just to switch the amp on. So, on a lot of the amplifiers, this is a great example, you have a gain and a master. Okay? So, with the master wound all the way up, what that does is it opens up the power amp section. It gives us the biggest possible clean sound. Okay, so clean sound. <laughs> At least as open as it gets. As, 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 that's as open as it gets. Yeah. Right now, this yeah. is a, it's a 20 watt amplifier. Okay. But it's interesting how this is also, the Marshall's also a 20 watt amplifier, and that's already clean, probably <laughs> louder than that gets. It just compresses straight away this thing. Yeah. 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 It's this different design. Exactly. Yeah. Has that, the design of this has those two ER34s, just have, have a lot more open headroom. Okay. <laughs> So again, if we listen to the big muff with this, we now. Should, just before we do that, we should also explain that we've got the Hampstead running through the Marshall cab. That's right. So this, yeah, that's what's happening. It's running through the Marshall cab that's sat behind Dan. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, so um, let's listen to the big muff. Now you think, even though this is wide open and it sounds very lovely and clean and twinkly, so you'd think it's gonna sound more like the twin with the big muff. But in actual fact, yeah, interesting. Not as you don't lose all the mids like you did in the Fender, but it's still very kind of. There's more. 
Yeah, there's more warm mid range there, but because it's so open, you're still getting those. You yeah. know, it, it doesn't round them off smoothly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. However, if we set the amplifier up, because I would, this is not how I would set my amplifier up. Yeah. Okay. The way I would do it is I would find the tone that I wanted from the amplifier clean, as in, how what's the cleanest I want? Yeah. Okay. So for me, I would. Find right now, with a sound like this, I can still get up. But when I bat the rhythm, bat the um, volume off. Still, it's, I can go really, you know, twinkly and lovely, but I can still dig in. Yeah, so the amps, the amps kind of on the edge of distortion, it drives when you push it, but exactly. it, it cleans up when you don't. Exactly. Now, obviously, with the master volume, I still have more room there, so I can take that sound louder or quieter, yeah. whatever's required. That will change the sound slightly because we're. we're you know, giving the, yeah, the back end yeah. more love, but I have, you know, more volume control, as opposed to with that wide open, as soon as I start moving the gain up, it sounds yeah. drastically different, okay? So, now, with that little bit of a hair on the note. Now, if I do the same thing with the big muff. It's not, it's smoothing those corners over, a, a, you know, a bit more. I tell you what would be interesting. You play um, now. What I'm going to do while while Daniel plays with the big muff, I'm going to affect the relationship between the gain and the master. Okay, very yeah. good. Yeah. So what we'll hear is is we'll hear the big muff sounding very different That's without right. changing the the big muff at all. Mm -hmm. All we're doing is changing the amp. Okay. Right. Yep. Okay. Go for it. So, could have been eight different fuzz pedals. Exactly. Yeah. So, when the that lovely square wave for the big muff hits the amplifier, it's the way that it's compressing and using that signal. Okay. And so in, that's what I, you know, I really like about this. It's it covers a lot of ground. There's also this great little voice um, boost in there as well. So, which boosts the mid range. So if I go from a yeah, get a nice sort of That sound. Okay, I'll you play it without and I'll I'll switch it in. Interesting, isn't it? Isn't it? So, the mid range, that is, that is our frequency. That's the you know where the guitar players should be living. 
and we can vent a little bit at the top and vent down to the bottom, but all of our harmonic areas, that's where that's coming through in the mid-range, which is why it's so important to get the mids right on an amplifier. So on an amplifier that just has the bass and treble, right, you've got pretty much a fixed midpoint. So by turning down the bass and treble, the mid stays where it is, so you get a mid hump. If you turn them up, then you get a mid scoop, yeah? Um, but the having that little foot switchable voice on there, so you go from like a almost fendery, mm. class A, you know, um, twinkly clean thing, and then if you go into a rock solo, throw them, kick in the, the mid range boost, and yeah, it's fab, absolutely fab. We were talking a little while ago, I was saying I've never, I haven't found the amplifier that does it all. I, I'm getting, yeah. you know, this for me, it's the closest I've heard. So cathode bias DL34s, who does mm. that? Matchless Chieftain? Matchless Chieftain does that, Is yep. the only one I can think of. I yes. think my Hughes and Kettner Pure Tone might be. I'd need to check that. It is. Is it? It is. I was talking to the guys from Hughes and Kettner yesterday. Well, the guy from JHS was here yesterday. Ah, uh, okay. And I bought that up. Now those three amplifiers couldn't be more different, but there's a quality to all of them that I really like. I think the the, um, the tone, it's a pure tone for me, is the best amp Hughes and Kettner make. You know, just it's my favourite sounding Hughes and Kettner amp. Yeah, me too. You know, it's, I just <laughs> like it. It sounds really great. Yeah. Um, but I'm what I'm finding with this is all the sounds that I'm after. I'm getting the the mixture of it. And also, it's one microphone in front of the speaker. You know what I mean? As opposed to the oh no, don't get me wrong. If I can, I'll always take two amplifiers with me. Mm. Um, well, but like you're saying, when you're supporting Led Zeppelin, supporting and, uh, exactly, and they can, they, don't, they won't give me a Swift, microphone. They only have one microphone. Exactly, not even a microphone, just a megaphone yeah. stuck in front of the amplifier. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, you know, um, I'm having, I'm having a lot of fun with this. But I just wanted to show you as well. Now, this is the amplifier with. Um, now it's not set up clean at all. It's set up, you know, a little bit dirty. I mean, that's ace. Now, even with that a little bit dirty, I throw on the, some delay. That's all in the front, right? That's all straight in the front. There's no yep. effects loop there, you know, and, and uh, you can get quite. It sounds awesome. It sounds great, doesn't it? Yeah. So. Now, now, not all amplifiers that run, that you know, you get a bit of that spongy compression, they don't all sound like that. But there are a few. Laser J is another good example mm -hmm. of an amplifier that compresses really well but takes effects really well. Right. This has a lot more clean headroom for me, but you can set it up so it's, it's grinding and lovely, and then it's still... Yeah, because some, when, it, we did, when we did the show uh, on whether to use the front end or the loop and mm -hmm. went through that whole discussion. Mm -hmm. What we discovered there was usually the more gain you, you put on, the more you were tempted to put your effect, your yeah. reverbs and delays in the loops yeah, because yeah. it just keeps them clearer yeah. sounding. Yeah. That's quite remarkable because there's, you know, it's crunching up quite well, but it's still all clear and... Still very detailed. There yeah, is still yeah. an effects loop in this. A yeah. Very, very clever effects loop. But for me, straight in the, the front, front can Sounds I just hear fantastic. that, what you just did, can I hear it on the other mode? I'll switch part of the way through. Yeah, yes, of course. Great. It's I, pretty cool, isn't it? I really like it in both modes, but I especially like it in the red mode. Yeah, yeah, and me too. Mm. I mean, that's that's the on 
That's the sound. That for me. That's that's the. There's no pedals there. There's nothing. That's the guitar. That's a great straight sound. Straight into the amplifier. So and that's 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 on like two. Yeah. You know, twenty watts. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Mic in front of that. Yep. So in terms of reverbs and delays, then what are we saying about front end of the amp that? All I'm, all I'm saying is, just be, if you set up the amplifier to have a little bit of, you know, crunch with the preamp, don't discount your reverbs and delays going straight in the front. Yeah. It can sound fantastic. As a matter of fact, what I like about it, uh, an amplifier that's designed to sound great, with the, the, you know, the, with a preamp working a bit, it can warm up those sounds as well. Mm. You know, um, so and we're talking, you know, obviously the the Strymon effects that we're using have got that lovely analog through signal and yeah. the, the digital um, effects on top. Do you know what, the more I hear them, the more that is so clear, is becoming so clear to me. Mm. Because, you know, we might put in other delays and reverbs and things, and when you hear those, it's like, okay, yeah. There's a lot of integrity in that sound. Absolutely, it's, you know, that's fantastic. Not, that's notwithstanding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, what have we learned? We've learned, once again, there are no rules. There are no rules. And. Nobody deals in absolutes, crystal clean and not crystalline clean, because that means something different. <laughs> crystal clean and really filthy, overdriven, dirty. Nobody really lives, well, it's unusual to find people that live in those worlds. So mm -hmm. there's this huge great grey area in between where, guess what, your pedals sound completely different depending on what amp you use them Absolutely. With. How much you drive that front end, how much the amp's overdriving, how much the you're hearing yep. the sound of the yep. pedal. Now, and also because, you know, the, especially the first two examples that we had, the difference between those is so massive. And when we're talking about the difference between overdrive pedals, sometimes we're really splitting hairs. A lot of the times, you know, people are saying, you know, well, I really like this, but this one I think has got a tad more bottom end, and all oh, this one's a bit tighter in the bottom end, and this one's, you know, the, the, the descriptions are, can be often insane. Oh, mate, I, I, you know, I've been writing that stuff for years. Exactly. And I believe it. But so do I. You know, it's the, it's the best vehicle that we have to try and describe the yeah. differences. But we've heard how vastly different the same pedal is into these. Now, if we, if we nudge along that spectrum, it just depends on where on that spectrum you sit as to how it's going to sound. So, and I've said it before, and I'll, you know, I'm happy to say this in every video that we do, you have to get your hands dirty. You know, when people email me and say, what pedal do you think I should be using? I, it's, I cannot answer, answer that. It. Even if they tell me the gear that they're using, because everyone has their own way that they attack the strings. I mean, I've got a really heavy right hand, you know, and a almost club-fisted left hand that doesn't like to do much. But, you know, the way I attack the strings is very different to the way that you attack the strings. Yeah. And the way that your strat sounds is very different to the way this sounds. Yeah. And, and, you know, the um, the parameters within that that are endless. Yeah. So you've got to work out. This is what sounds best for me. Go down and just try as much stuff as you can. I liked your bit of philosophy earlier on because the the there's it's one thing getting your hands dirty and not knowing what you're doing and and just being blindly twisting knobs and just wondering where the hell you're going. Yeah. You, what you said earlier about asking better questions. Yeah. That's what it's all about, isn't Definitely. it? It's going. Okay. I'm I'm aware that. Changing this in this way will have an effect on the sound. Therefore, yes. I'm not just twiddling blindly. I'm actually twiddling with a with a hope of getting somewhere. Yeah. So I know that this overdrive pedal is going to sound very different with different amps. Yes. Yeah. Let's try it. So you know, hopefully we've helped inform you a little bit of that direction, and you know. But again, please keep the comments coming, guys. It's um really invaluable, and uh, we will see you next week. See you next week. Cheers, guys. <laughs>